Good morning, I'm Eddie Muller. It was back in the 1970s when I was still a teenager that I first learned of the legendary film we're showing today on Noir Alley. Now it was the early stages of my obsession with older movies and I'll admit a lot of that interest stemmed from an infatuation with the enticing actresses of the classic Hollywood era, especially the bad girls like Gloria Graham, Marie Windsor and Audrey Totter, sexy fixtures and what I'd come to know as film noir. Then one day an older more experienced movie buff told me I hadn't seen nothing until I'd seen an actress named Anne Savage in a grungy little B-movie called Detour. She played a character known only as Vera, whom this guy advertised as the meanest woman in the history of the movies. Information? I want the number of the Hollywood police station. Okay, I got it, thanks. This was long before the advent of TCM, or even the invention of the video recorder. So there was no way to see Detour except to diligently comb the weekly TV guide and wait for it to show up on Movies Till Dawn or some other dead of night show. And that's exactly how I first experienced it. And dare I say, it may be the perfect way to absorb this strange, unsettling film in a state where you're not quite sure whether you're watching it or dreaming it. Either way, Vera is the dangerous dame we have for you today. Now, Detour was made in 1945 by Poverty Row Studio, PRC. The acronym stood for Producers Releasing Corporation. But folks in Hollywood joked that it stood for Pretty Rotten Crap. And that name may have been accurate, at least until director Edgar G. Ulmer started working at PRC. One of a number of talented directors who'd emigrated to Hollywood from Germany to escape the rise of the Third Reich, Ulmer had been blackballed at every major studio after having an affair with Shirley Castle, the wife of director Max Alexander, whose uncle, Carl Lemley Jr., was chief of production at Universal. Jr. saw to it that Ulmer was relegated to Poverty Row for the rest of his career. But that couldn't stop such a wildly creative director, even with the most minuscule budgets. In adapting Detour from Martin Goldsmith's more expansive novel, Ulmer took the tale, which told parallel stories of both Al Roberts and his girlfriend Sue Harvey, and streamlined it into a harrowing tale of one man's cross-country misadventure and how his life runs off the rails when he encounters a hitchhiking harpy from hell. Ann Savage and Tom Neal had previously made several pictures together under contract to Columbia. For various reasons, both had fallen out of favor at the studio and both ended up at PRC, which in 1945 was like falling from the curb to the gutter. But amazingly, under Ulmer's vivid direction, working on a super short schedule and a meager budget of $25,000, Neil and Savage ended up making the film for which they are both remembered. A few films of this era got so much out of so little. Detour remains a touchstone for low-budget filmmakers, not only because of the resourcefulness Ulmer displays as a director, but because the film is unique in its use of an unreliable narrator, relating the tale of his downfall, true or not. Along with Arthur Ripley's The Chase, made the following year, this is the rare Hollywood film of the era that has the unsettling rhythm and the off-putting tone of a genuine nightmare. So fasten your seatbelts and don't stop for strangers. From 1945, here's Detour.